you might really be surprised here. There are actually scientists in major food companies that figure out how to make food more addictive so that you can actually eat more. Three of the biggest culprits are sugar, fat, and salt. But in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how food companies and big businesses get you addicted and have scientists to keep you addicted to their product. What's up everyone, Alex Hine here over at ModernHealthMonk.com. So I often get emails from people that say things like, I eat all the time. I eat when I'm not hungry. I eat when I'm hungry. I eat when I'm tired. I eat when I'm happy. I eat when I'm sad. I eat in the middle of the night. I actually had a woman say she gets up at four in the morning just to go eat for no reason. She wakes up from a dead sleep because she's craving sugar. I mean, that is insane. That borders on a heroin addiction. Now here's the thing. Researchers at these big food companies know that rats that are added with sugar, fat, and salt in certain combinations will dramatically overeat even if they're thin or fat or if they're hungry or they're already full. So check out these studies in rats done to see how food can be addictive. So researchers have actually found that it's not just fat that's addictive to people. It's the combination of sugar and fat. So in one study, they had various types of milk ranging from skim milk to whole milk to half and half. In other words, varying fat contents and they put in varying sugar contents into those milks and they asked people which ones they liked the best the taste out of all of these the ones that people liked the most were not the low fat or even the high sugar but they liked the ones with the highest combination of both sugar and of fat in another study researchers had actually bred two different types of rats the first rat was bred to obesity it was bred to actually overeat the second rat was an not prone to obesity. It was bred to eat a normal amount and be thinner. But here's the thing. Once they were exposed to a rat chow that had high fat and high sugar, both of the rats ate without restraint. They just massively ate to excess. Now what's interesting here though is that it wasn't just the high fat content. It was actually the presence of sugar. The rats that were given just high fat would naturally stop eating, but once sugar was added, they would just eat without restraint. So they would just go crazy eating. So it was the combination of a high sugar plus these other additives as well, like the fat. Now, a third study, this time done on humans, actually kept overweight men inside of a lab so they, you know, their calorie intake could actually be measured and compared. And what they did was the researchers had these people stay near a vending machine. Vending machine was your typical, you know, filled with candy, filled with crap type of vending machine. And originally the participants had the same kind of diet. It was a moderate carb, moderate protein, low fat diet. And when they let these guys eat without restraint over a period of days, they all ended up going towards the same kind of diet. Number one, they overate by 1,500 extra calories per day. And also, the diet became dramatically lower in protein and way higher in fat, sugar, and salt. So without any kind of rules, people will naturally gravitate towards eating more sugar, more fat, more salt, and more calories. So if there's a massive amount of access, free access to this stuff, the human body will naturally gravitate towards these three additives. Now, food companies typically use three tactics to get you to eat more. The first is added sugar, fat, and salt. So we know how those make you eat more. The next is processing. So when a sauce is added to, you know, avocado is added to cream or any kind of dairy or fat, fat is added because it creates a creamy, natural texture. Sugar is added because it increases palatability. So it makes it taste better and feel better in your mouth. And salt does a very similar thing. And the third is just artificial flavors. So for example, the average hot chocolate on the shelf in your market doesn't have any chocolate in it whatsoever. It doesn't even have any dairy in it typically. It's just a science experiment put into a box. So that can seem kind of scary because it's kind of like if the whole billion dollar food business, food industry is trying to get you to eat more and trying to get you hooked on their product, how do you actually combat that? Well, it's really about understanding biology and it's not about willpower and discipline. So for example, one of the ways that I teach people is by using the index card method. Now, I've talked about this ad nauseum before. It basically involves carrying around an index card and writing, when do you get a craving and what were you just doing? So what actually triggered it? Was it boredom? Was it sadness? Was it an emotional state? Was it not emotional? Now I've got dozens of articles and videos on that, so I'll make sure to link up below. But the big thing here is to understand that Food, the food industry, has scientists figuring out how to get you more hooked on their product. And that these three things, sugar, fat, and salt, are added almost everywhere. So when you go out to eat or when you buy boxed food, be very careful and make sure to read between the lines to see what's really in there. Now I wanna hear from you below. What is your favorite guilty craving snack? 
tell me in the comments section below. If you're on YouTube, go on over to modernhealthmonk.com. Go ahead, get on the email list. There's a real food weight loss guide for you there. Again, all my best stuff, all my guides are only on modernhealthmonk.com. Now, leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. You'll get the next video, and I'll see you next time.